Tom Clancy's The Division made a big splash when it was announced in 2013. It's a game that a lot of people got really excited for just by the concept alone, but on the other hand, it's a Ubisoft game, people have been burned before, and they're rightly skeptical. With it finally releasing this March, we're here to give you 10 things you need to know about Tom Clancy's The Division, starting off with number 10. The Division is set entirely on the island of Manhattan. Other New York City boroughs like Brooklyn and the Bronx and Staten Island will not be present in the game. Early versions of the game did show off the Brooklyn and Bronx being in the game, but unfortunately Ubisoft has since announced that no other boroughs will be included. That being said, we don't know if Brooklyn was being worked on, they could include it later on as like an add-on, but Ubisoft isn't saying anything. This Manhattan is probably one of the more realistic recreations of New York City I've seen in a video game in a while. The game is centered around Midtown Manhattan with the ambition of trying to be as to scale as possible. So basically in the game you're going to be exploring Midtown and the most iconic areas of New York City. Midtown Manhattan of course includes the Empire State Building, Times Square, and in the game, you got the surrounding areas like Chelsea, Hell's Kitchen, Kipps Bay, Flatiron District, and some others. And at number nine, you need to know that the division will not have item trading, at least upon the game's release. Judging from a lot of the gameplay decisions here, it might just be going the same route as Destiny, or it might be added later. I wouldn't rule out some sort of item trading or some other version of this player interaction and sharing being added later on. Seeing as Ubisoft has invested a lot of time and money in this game, they want to keep people playing for a while. And I'm sure we're going to see a lot of additions to the gameplay, so I wouldn't rule out item trading. But for now, don't expect it going into the game. And at number 8, for you graphics fans and PC players, The Division offers tons of graphical options for the PC version including post FX, image sharpening, and more. The frame rate on the PC is unlocked. The Division's minimum PC specs are 6 gigs of RAM, a GeForce GTX 560 with 2 gigabytes of video RAM or equivalent, DirectX 11, and 40 gigabytes of space available. So PC players, now you're a bit more prepared. Hopefully this game looks graphically good. When it was announced in 2013, it looked like one of the best looking games ever with a ton of detail. But since we've seen looks at the beta and more final versions of the game, it looks like the graphics have been downgraded. Not as massively disastrous as something like Watch Dogs, but it's still worth noting. And at number 7, in the division you can unlock skills, perks, and talents for your character. All three of these are grouped in three different categories, medical, tech, and security. With skills, players can have two of them active at a time. These are basically player abilities that you can unlock and use anytime you want out in the field. Talents on the other hand are passive skills, and then perks are one-time upgrades that give you permanent boosts in your stats or buff something. There's a lot here, there's a lot of tiers, and there's a lot to unlock, especially not even counting signature skills. Everybody's going to be able to roll a different category. And the best part is that you can use any of these in the medical, tech, and security and mix and match. Or if you want to dump all of your unlocks into one specific category like medical, you can be a healer character. But the choice is yours. It's all up to you. And at number 6, the Division's going to have a forward operating base, or an FOB if you play Metal Gear, that is tied to character development. This is like a persistent location that you can return to after missions and upgrade any time. Just like skills and talents and stuff, the forward operating base is separated into three different sections, a security section, a medical section, and a technology section. These are where you can go around and get missions and upgrade your character and stuff. The coolest part is that it's made out of the Farley Post Office building, that legendary building that you see behind Madison Square Garden. I don't know, that, I think that's pretty cool. It's just cool to see that famous New York landmark turned into kind of like a battlefield station. And at number 5, the Division is going to have seamless movement in private and public spaces. This is doing a thing similar to Destiny that it allows players to feel like they're in a bigger population of players. It's kind of like a light MMO. There's also instant private spaces that allow players to do stuff and do missions together in a co-op setting. Then there's also going to be a social space for a bunch of players to hang out and just do stuff, like the tower in Destiny. And just like Destiny in the tower, there's a bunch of e-boats so you can run around and like dance and do jumping jacks and high-five other players. If that's what you look for in a shooter multiplayer game, then I guess The Division is for you. And at number 4, it's very important to know that The Division will not have pay to win microtransactions. There isn't any way to buy upgrades with real actual money, and that's a good thing. Ubisoft has confirmed that the game will have paid DLC in the future, but they have came out and expressly said that there are no paid microtransactions at all. So that's pretty cool and good to know. And at number 3, you should definitely know that The Division has proximity-based voice chat. This is on PC, Xbox One, and PS4, and so players can hear each other when they're nearby in public spaces. This is awesome and good to know, and it's good that it works like that on any console or system. Especially when you're in a public space or one of the areas where you run into other characters, it'll be cool to easily just link up and hear exactly what they're saying. Then on the flip side, you could also hear a 6-year-old kid being yelled at by his mom, or someone who doesn't turn their stereo down while they're playing, which totally sucks actually now that I think about it. And at number two, something you really need to know about The Division is that there is loot. 
Lots of loot. And we've already brought it up a lot so far, but you need to know that it's in a similar system to Destiny. In the Division, through playing the game, you find and unlock different weapons and armor. And, surprise, they're color-coded. And just like in a lot of other games, if you find something that you don't like or need, you can dismantle or sell them. Breaking stuff down that you find in the Division can be used towards other stuff, like upgrades. And I think ultimately that's where a lot of the fun in the Division is going to be found. Shooting dudes and hunting for more shit and finding the coolest new gun. And at number one, you need to know that the Division is going to have appearance-based customization. When you start the game, there's a modest character creation screen where you can make your own silly face. And then in-game, you have vanity items. These vanity items act as like an overlay for your actual gear that you have in-game. Some MMOs do this, where you have certain gear of certain levels that have abilities that you like, but maybe you don't like the way it looks. Appearance-based gear is kind of like the top layer for all the gear that you unlock and find. You've probably seen it in a lot of other MMOs or other games like this, but you can swap stuff around and change how you look without actually changing the stats. So if you find the gear with the right abilities for you, you don't have to look like a stupid idiot with mismatched armor. Makes sense, right? And like I said in number two, I think this is going to be one of the main focuses of the game. Finding cool stuff to make your character look really cool. And you know what? Isn't that what we all want from video games? Am I right? Guys, those are 10 things you need to know about Tom Clancy's Division. What you also need to know at the time of this video, the beta is going to start for Xbox One players on January 28th. The beta starts for PS4 and PC users on January 29th. And then this beta runs to January 31st. And then finally, the Division is going to release on March 8th. So hopefully it's good. Time will tell though. We honestly have no idea. It's up in the air. Most importantly though, we want to know from you guys in the comments. How do you feel about the Division? Are you 50-50 on it? You think it's going to be shit? Or are you really looking forward to it? And if there's anything else you think players need to know about this game jumping in, let us know in the comments. If you did have a good time with this video and maybe you want more Division videos, click the like button because that helps us out. And if you're new, subscribing is a good idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.